I cannot uh, emphasize this often enough that information about a file is actually all stored in these entries in the inodes, in the inode table. So things like who is the owner of a file that you would see with the ls-l command, or the group associated with the file, or the type of file, access times, size of the file, all those things are actually not stored to, um, along with the contents. The contents are elsewhere, and all you have is a pointer, uh, so to speak, of the contents. Okay, so the information about a file is all stored in one place in this table. And each file in a directory, um, well, lives, the information about files in a in particular directory is actually stored in the data blocks themselves. So this will be important. You just want to keep that picture in mind as we take a look at how um, information about a file can be accessed. So information about a file is in its inode, in a particular inode. Things such as owner of the file, size of the file, location on the disk, when it was created, when it was modified, when it was last accessed, and so on. All of those things are in the inode table. This information can be obtained by using the command line command stat, which we've used in the past, or C functions, and there's three of them, three main ones, stat, fstat, and lstat. Now it turns out we'll use lstat. The reason is that stat gives us information about a named file, but if you have a link, what stat does is it actually goes through all those levels of indirection to find the ultimate file and then it gives you information about that the the destination um, the actual actually I should say the source so just to go back and emphasize stat what stat does is if you have something like this you have a symbolic link and you say you call the stat function on this file well this will actually go to here and give you information about this what's stored in this inode table not about what's stored in here so that's useful sometimes to get information about the, the destination itself so to do that for that reason we will use lstat there's also a related uh, function c function called fstat but this is information that you get for an open file. So oftentimes we won't need, we won't want to open a file to get information about it, and so we'll have to use either stat or lstat. And as we saw, uh, lstat uh, does exactly the same things as stat, except it works differently for links. So for that reason, we will use lstat. That's the most um, you don't have to, but that's the most uh, general way of dealing with files, getting file information. So how do we use these functions? Uh, either lstat or stat work the same way. You have to give it a path, uh, which is just a string. Just remember, anytime you see a car star, it's a, a, you can guess that it's a null terminated string. And this will be treated as a constant. And then what you what it does is it takes a pointer to a struct of type stat. So this is a stat struct, and it puts in information into this area of memory. So you, the programmer who's using stat, will have to allocate a chunk of memory and take that a pointer to that chunk of memory and pass it to the stat function. The stat function will say, we'll look up the information for this, whatever this file is. Um, indicated by this path and put in fill in the fields of this struct with the relevant information for this file so you the programmer have to set aside this memory that's the thing so before you call stat almost all the time you have to malloc or have some struct set aside for for doing this stat query same thing with fstat only only difference is you don't give it a file name you have you give it the file descriptor of an opened file so use f open or open get a file descriptor and then you put in uh, that file descriptor that's the output of open into fstat
Okay, so what kinds of things are in here? You can get all of this information by using manstat. Um, you should be able to see the struct, the actual fields of the struct, not all of them, but most of the ones are, are described in the man page. So things like the some of the fields in this struct stat are, uh, are so, so stat is also, besides being the name of this function, is also the name of a struct. It's a little confusing, but I hope you can keep that straight. So stat is a struct and it's also a function. The struct stat has a whole bunch of fields. Things like the device on which the file is stored, the inode number of the particular file that's um, given by this uh, input into this function using the path string. The lowest 12 bits of this ST mode are the permissions. So for example, read, write, execute for um, owner, group, and others, things like that. Number of hard links to this file. Remember, we saw that with the ls minus l output. We get a, one of the fields in ls minus l is number of links to the file. And then things like user ID of the owner, group associated with the file. For devices, there'll be some additional information, the size in bytes, time of the last read, write, access, number of blocks, or actually the number of blocks and the size of each block. Okay. So if you take a look at some of the details, you'll see nine bits for, um, oops, nine bits in ST mode. In the ST mode, oops, not able to link. Okay, the ST mode field of the stru stat struct will have um, 12 bits that are used. Nine bits are read write access for others. This will be for others. This is for a group. This is for the owner. Just the, like the output of ls minus l. And then there are some other bits. For example, set user ID on execution. That's, for example, um, things like uh, commands um, that need super user privileges. You can uh, execute those files. If this bit is set, that means that you, ordinary users can execute that command as a super user. So an example would be something like the various networking functions. If that bit is set, if this bit is set, ordinary users can execute networking commands as if they were the super user. So you have a similar thing with group ID. You can pretend, usually these are, both of these are used to elevate your privileges, not go down. Um, usually to elevate your privileges or as just you can do this if you have um, users if you want to have users execute your executable as you so that you so that other users can have access to your files things like that you can set uh, your user ID flag and then finally there's also a saved text image this is also called sticky bit it's you it was used for a different purpose completely but now it's used for things like slash temp. So this set user ID on execution is for executable files. When the program is run, you switch to the user ID of the owner of the actual file. So you, for example, can give uh, other users access to your files by setting the user ID of an executable file. Same thing with set group ID on execution. And this is typically used, like I said, it's used to elevate privileges, to run commands as if you were the super user. Now there's a th the third bit uh, in this special set of three bits is save text image. Now the name comes from the fact that on older systems, if this bit was set, then the executable image of, let's say, this, this was used for executable files only. It's not true anymore. But let's say, for example, vi. If we, if, if in the vi command, um, sorry, the vi executable file, we set this bit, then this image is saved in memory even after a user quits vi. For as long as the system stays up, 
and so that if someone else uses VI, it's ready to go. It's saved in um, it's saved in memory. It's actually it used to be that it was saved in swap space, but that's not important. It's just that it was a fast way to load up a command that's going to be used by a lot of people. So you you save it in memory. Once you the first person who runs VI, for example, in this case, um, would it would be slow. But then once it's loaded up, anyone else who uses VI, it'll be fast. So that said. It's no longer used for that because it's just there's too many problems with doing this. The way it's used in current systems, um, in whether you're talking uh, Mac OS X, Linux, Unix, any of these, the the way it's currently used is it's for it's used only for directories. So in a directory with a sticky bit set, only owners of a file can remove or rename files. So a typical example is slash temp. Everyone can write to files, but only the owners, so every all users can write to the slash temp directory, but only the owners can rename them or delete the file. So slash temp usually everyone everyone can create files, but if you could delete other owner other users' files, even though you're not the owner, well that would be bad. So the remedy was to use this um, you to set the sticky bit of slash temp of the directory, not the files. And that allows everyone to write, but only the owners to rename or delete. Okay, so those are some of the details, maybe more than you wanted to find out about, uh, um, about some of these file and some of the file information. So that's all of those things, those three bits along with uh, permission bits constitute 12 bits and that's all comes from this field in the struct called stat and you can um, get all of this information by using the stat command so by using the stat command you get a pointer to a struct which contains all of this information okay so next up we will take a look at some directory functions um, and um, so, so far we've used simple functions for files, so open, create, read, write. It turns out you can use those for directories, but it's a lot better to use special functions just for directories.